Hey there, my name is Helper Wesley, and today I'm going to be recreating asteroids. I won't be showing you how I'm creating these events, just the ones that I'm using, because I'm assuming that you've gone back and watched the rest of the tutorials that we've made, but I will be showing you what I'm doing. So to begin with, I'm going to be using the Space Shooter Redux pack, and I'm going to jump right into a blank game project. I'll create a new scene, and I'll create a sprite object named player. For this example, I'm going to take advantage of the physics behavior that comes with GDevelop by default. And I'm going to start by leaving everything alone except for changing the gravity to zero, so that the object doesn't just fall out of the sky. So now we'll move over to the event sheet, and start with a player movement, with the condition if the W key is pressed, and then the action apply a physics force towards the angle the player is facing. And then I'm going to move the origin of the sprite into the center so that we can use that origin point as the point where forces will be applied. And then we'll copy our condition for our first event, and then paste those for the A and D key presses, and then we'll apply a torque to the player object based on which key is being pressed. Take note, this is not just the rotate an object action, this is apply a torque. It's specific to the physics behavior, and I'm using this because I want to make sure that all of the forces are being applied using the same kind of rules. And now, I have a character that spins out of control. The problem here is that the sprite is in the wrong orientation. So I'm going to open up Piskel, change its orientation, and then save it. With that part fixed, I'm going to move on to firing bullets. Using the conditions when the spacebar is released, and once, and as you can see I've created the bullet object already, and since the bullet is a really bright color, I'm going to change the background of the scene to black so it stands out better. And now for the bullet, we put the action create object, and add a force, and rotate object. But moving the rotate action above the apply a force action because we want to make sure that it's rotated before it starts moving. And the bullet's orientation is off just like the player's was. So I could go into Piskel and change the orientation of the bullet just like I did with the player, or I can add 90 degrees to the rotation and change it so that the player's angle is the thing that tells it which direction to go. And after we tweak the origin of the bullet, just like we did the player, it works just fine. Though I do have to change the Z order so that the bullet spawns below the player and not on top. And that's the player basically done. Next we'll make another event for the beginning of scene, where we're going to change the center of the camera to the zero point, and change the zoom to 0 0.5. Changing the camera to the zero point was so that we could easily do screen wrap, and zooming the camera out was just so that we would have a better scale for an asteroids game. Now let's add some asteroids. We'll add in some animations, and give them the physics 2.0 behavior, place a couple in scene, and we'll do that again with medium and small asteroids. And now because everything has the physics behavior, I can start knocking things around like marbles. And just like in asteroids, we're going to make it so that when you shoot an asteroid, it blows up into smaller parts. So we'll create a for each instance event, where the object being picked is the big asteroid, use the condition if bullet is in collision with asteroid, then we will create two medium asteroids, give them a random rotation, and then apply a force in whichever direction they're facing. And then we delete the original asteroid and the bullet. And then we do that two more times, with the only real difference being that the small asteroid doesn't spawn anything, it just gets deleted. We're getting pretty close to this being asteroids, we're just missing a couple of things. The most noticeable one is the screen wrap. So we're going to create a for each instance event, and for the object picked this time, it'll actually be the group everything, because I put everything in one group. This game's resolution is 800 by 600, and because we moved our camera to center on zero, then we can use this condition, if an object in the group, everything, goes beyond 800 in the x direction, or goes behind negative 800 in the x direction, then it will have its x position times by negative 1, which will flip it to the other side. And then we just do the same thing for the y direction. And now we're almost there. The last thing that's needed for this to be a game is a fail state. So we're going to go to the project manager and look for the extension health. We'll add that to the project 
And now I'll go to the player and select health, giving it 3 as its total and a 5 second cooldown until it can be damaged again. Then we'll create a tiled sprite and call it lives, place it in screen into the default border of the camera, putting it onto the UI layer that I made earlier, and then we use the physics condition if the player collides with everything. Note that this will ignore the bullet because the bullet doesn't have the physics behavior. And then we'll add the action damage player from the health extension and then add an action to change the width of the tile sprite and then we'll copy that action and put it at the beginning of scene so that it modifies the width of the sprite at the beginning of the scene as well. And the one last thing we need now is for the player to die. This specific condition comes from the health extension, and then we'll delete the player, but on top of that I'm going to create a text object called Game Over, and put that on screen, and have it hide during the beginning of the scene, and show up again when the player dies. And that's how long it takes to recreate asteroids in GDevelop. The only real problem being that the game doesn't have any sound, and it isn't very much fun to play. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to add all the bells and whistles that make games fun to play and interesting to look at. But for now, be sure to comment down below and tell us what kind of tutorials you would like to see next. Maybe we'll add them to the pile. I have been Helper Wesley, and I'm glad I could help.